in the turnover of energy, you produce a lot of free radicals requiring you to intake a significant amount of extra antioxidants. And when you look at supplements or even drugs as a whole, all of the supplements and drugs which have a positive effect on mitochondrial functioning are also antioxidants. With mitochondrial biogenesis, it's the process of actually producing more mitochondria within the cell themselves. Again, the cell, the mitochondria can't leave the cell and go to another cell. But in cases of mitochondrial dysfunction, where some of the mitochondria actually have their cell membranes burst, these mitochondria can connect to another mitochondria which had their cell membrane punctured or ruptured. They can actually connect together and then two mitochondria can fulfill the same amount of ATP synthesis as one mitochondria. So they don't really self-destruct in this sense. They kind of come together and then continue with ATP synthesis, combining two mitochondria into one mitochondria for normal ATP production. So this is all very interesting, right? Mitochondrial biogenesis is quite complicated, but there's a lot of um, compounds and drugs and supplements and lifestyle practices you can actually incorporate to upregulate mitochondrial biogenesis. So now you have a lot more mitochondria within the cell themselves, producing a lot more ATP. And on the subject of mitochondrial dysfunction, it's kind of a double-edged sword, so to say. Is it the mitochondria that starts dysfunctioning, resulting in aging? Or is it the overall aging of the host body resulting into mitochondrial dysfunction? There's something to say for both, but in most cases it occurs at the same time, because again, the mitochondria are heavily dependent on sex hormones, they're heavily dependent on you providing nutrients. And as you age, a lot of the enzymatic reactions within your body, which is which are dependent on NAD+, downregulate. Your sex hormone production downregulates. Your growth hormone levels downregulate. Your metabolism downregulates. So from all the research that I've done, I would rather say that mitochondrial dysfunction is due to the host body kind of deteriorating with age, not the mitochondria themselves. You're not giving the mitochondria adequate nutrients, adequate um, electron exchange for them to function properly. So if you take care of your health and you follow some general anti-aging protocols, I think your mitochondria should stay sustained far longer than general population. So again, you can't really um, tell your mitochondria what to do, but you can provide them with nutrients and provide them with electrons and provide a scenario with high antioxidant status for the free radicals that the mitochondria produce do not have a negative impact on further mitochondrial function or biogenesis. As long as you do that, I think that the mitochondria are going to reward you and produce a significant amount of ATP in return, making you feel even more youthful. So you can attack it from both angles. You take care of anti-aging and because you're taking care of your anti-aging, the mitochondria will fur further provide anti-aging for you by keeping the ATP synthesis up the par of what you want. Half of this protocol is actually mitigating the reactive oxygen species which the mitochondria are now going to produce when you upregulate them. Again, reactive oxygen species are being produced by mitochondria in ATP synthesis and partially through the beta oxidation and a glycolysis which happens outside within the human cell. So in the turnover of energy, you produce a lot of free radicals requiring you to intake a significant amount of extra antioxidants. And when you look at supplements or even drugs as a whole, all of the supplements and drugs which have a positive effect on mitochondrial functioning are also antioxidants. So you really need to improve your antioxidant profile. Let's say half of this stack is actually improving mitochondrial function and the other half is mitigating the reactive oxygen species. Through antioxidant intake, you need both for everything to work because if you upregulate mitochondrial functioning and you don't take care of the free radicals, you're basically killing off your mitochondria and the cells from within because now you get DNA damage, etc., etc., etc. And that's definitely not what you want. This is why I don't like DNP because DNP acts as an uncoupler within mitochondrial functioning, producing tons of free radicals. I mean, it's like free radical galore. And even though there's a couple of studies that show that a very low dose of DNP, what was it, 50 milligrams per day, can actually have a beneficial effect because now you improve how you how your body responds to this reactive oxygen species. So you get a little bit of an adaptive response, even though that study shows that it might have some anti-aging effects. Um, why bother? You know, there's better ways to lose fat 
better ways to increase your body temperature, um, much better ways to improve anti-aging parameters. And if you want to improve your well reactive, reactive oxygen species and get some sort of adaptive response out of that, all you need to do is follow this protocol, but you'll feel significantly better than running any dose of DMP for anti-aging purposes. But before we start optimizing, let's discuss all of the medications which are known to have a negative effect on mitochondrial functioning. And it could be through a lot of different pathways. It could be through mTOR one or two, it could be through the MP kinase pathway, or actually a destruction or negative effect on the mitochondria themselves. It's been a very long road to piece all of that together. So if you see some of the medications or drugs that you're currently taking on this list, I would highly advise you to do additional research because I can't spend another six months diving into every little performance enhancing drug, every little medication, every little drug, and their unique negative or positive effects on mitochondrial functioning. So long story short, in this list of notes is that um, sodium valproate has a negative effect on mitochondrial functioning. So does metformin. So does uh, fluvoxamine, fluoxetine, citrulline, and many of the other antidepressants. So I'm happy I already discontinued fluvoxamine. But what I can say is that running fluvoxamine or not running fluvoxamine on this mitochondrial support stack, I didn't notice any difference. I've run metformin on this mitochondrial support stack. And even though I don't really like metformin because it reduces my overall workout performance the next day in the gym, or if I use it every day, my workout performance basically goes down to 75%, which is certainly not what I want. Um, adding metformin or fluvoxamine in doesn't mitigate, doesn't undo any of the benefits you'll get from a mitochondrial support stack just like this. But if you're going towards the cheaper end, with just a couple options which we'll discuss, and you're on metformin and fluvoxamine and some of the other drugs in this list, maybe it won't be as effective. So keep that in mind. Antipsychotic medications like heliperidol, blood thinner medications like warfarin, even diuretics like furosemide, Lasix, heart medications, propanolol, nabivolol, all have a negative effect on mitochondrial functioning to a certain extent. Um, cholesterol and lipid lowering medications, so that's the statins like a resuvastatin, atorvastatin, simvastatin. Um, acetamide actually has a positive effect potentially on mitochondrial function, but that's further down the line. Pain medication, ibuprofen, naproxen, um, aspirin, paracetamol, the diclofenac, Celebrex. Man, all of these have a negative effect on mitochondrial functioning. And even nicotine, from what I was able to piece it together, doesn't have a beneficial effect on mitochondrial functioning. But that could be because nicotine has both pro-oxidant and antioxidant effects. So it depends on which entry into this um, mitochondrial function regarding nicotine you actually adhere to because nicotine is quite well documented, but I wasn't able to find that much conclusive evidence that it either has a positive or negative effect on the mitochondria. Even lidocaine, um, which most people won't really have access to unless it's in the form of cocaine, keep in mind, it has a negative effect on mitochondrial functioning. I did not really dive into how recreational drugs affect mitochondrial function. And again, I can't go through the entire water doping list and see if it has a positive or negative effect on mitochondrial functioning. So if you have an exclusive stack and this mitochondrial support stack is not working as expected, maybe go through down, down the list and then type in the medication or the drug or whatever that you're using, the supplements, type in mitochondria and start researching by yourself to see if it has a positive or negative effect on your mitochondrial functioning.